Awareness and action. Two goals of yesterday's World AIDS Day. Countries around the globe are working together to bring help to the nearly 40 million people living with HIV worldwide. One group at risk in the U.S., African Americans. Almost 50 percent of all new infections are among African Americans. Many schools are trying to curb the spread of HIV among minorities at a young age, and one new computer-based program is dealing out a healthy dose of reality. Who's Melinda? Nobody. I'm serious. Look, it's a pretty common name. What, what are we playing, 20 questions? I'll boil it down to one. Do you have herpes? Well, Manny, right? Trash talking again? Man, don't you trust me, Shauna? Just answer my question. Yeah, I do. I have herpes. But I was going to tell you. Wow. Well, all right. Does that program really work? Patricia Bransford, founder of the National Urban Technology Center, and Kadeem Coleman, a student at Frederick Douglass Academy too, join us to talk about this reality-based AIDS course. Welcome to you both. Thank you for being here. And uh, Patricia, I will start, for you, uh, start with you. Does that kind of in-your-face, being as blunt as you can be, uh, a, a type of a type of a program you think is what's necessary and needed to get through to the youth? Well, we think so. Um, it engages youth, and then it communicates information about sensitive topics that put them in harm's way. So we think communication in group workshops is really very important. All right, well, and and Kadeem, does that work? I mean, how what, what's it like around your your peers, young folks these days? Uh, touchy subjects or uh, sensitive subjects or just uh, so intimate and personal a subject like that and maybe embarrassing to talk about. Does something like this, you think, get through to kids or will kids see this or students you know and just kind of laugh at it? Well, I think they will get to know it because it's like, it's something new, but at the same time, it's something that we could all kind of relate to. And is it more so the message, um, really, Patricia, or how the message gets to the kids. I mean, the, the lesson's the same. You can sit them down and you can look in their eyes and tell them. So, so are, is the message really not getting through or is it just important how the message is conveyed to them? Well, we think it's the way we communicate the message through prom night. We use cartoons, we use group workshops, we use interactive exercises to get kids involved so that they now can begin to build healthier, more productive lives for themselves. Kadeem, how much uh, do you and your peers talk about uh, things like this, um, uh, uh, sexually transmitted diseases, AIDS, the seriousness of it, how often uh, does that topic really come up? Well, I can say if you're chilling just with your friends, the topic most likely will not come up, but you're in school doing a lesson, then yeah, the topic comes up quite frankly. Is the pressure uh, there, always there, um, to have sex, to, to uh, is it always there among young people? Could Actually, he... I, yeah, I think it is. Uh, it's I, like, go ahead. I said it's like no matter what time it is, where it is, it's like it's always that pressure is right there in your face all the time, every time. Where are you getting, uh, you and some of your friends, getting, I guess, your education? And where are you learning your lessons from uh, about sex and sexually transmitted diseases these days. We have so many images you all are being bombarded with from uh, music videos and whatnot and uh, images on television and, and movies. Uh, where are you getting a lot of information these days, young folks? Well, you know, I say young folks these days, we get information from two sources. The first source is like, you could say fantasy, like like you say the rap videos, the music videos and everything. Then there's a real source. We get it from school. You could get it from your phys ed education, health classes and um, the urban tech program too. Patricia, which one, as he, as he just said there, two different ways you get that information. Which one are the kids listening to? And, and how tough is it for you trying to do the work you're doing and you're trying to combat and going up against those constant images? Like you say, you're seeing TV on the big screen, uh, uh, in magazines, everywhere, just images of sex. Right. Well, we think that the, uh, the increase in cases, quite frankly, comes from myths and fears that young people have um, and do not face the reality of it. We think they need a heads up. We think they need a program like Prom Night that engages them, that includes them in the group discussion and the interactive exercises.
All right. And so far, and just real quickly, how many are, uh, are being exposed to your program, the prom night program now? Well, we have built over 500 centers across the country in the last 11 years. And our Youth Leadership Academy is being implemented in approximately 150 of those. We've also just been invited to offer these courses in the New York City public schools. Well, Patricia Bransford with the uh, National Urban Technology Center, um, congratulations on the work you're doing, and hopefully it will uh, get through. If it only gets through to, to one, that's, that's enough. But hopefully, that's enough. Hopefully many, many more. And Kadeem Coleman, uh, keep your head on straight, young fella. Good luck to you, and I uh, appreciate you for uh, spending some time with us as well. All right, thank, thank you. Thank you. Well, of course, young lives filled with tragedy. AIDS took their parents away. What now for the orphans of Nairobi? Christiane Amanpour reports from Africa where the epidemic has...